But you know, you'll find that the Muslim world, particularly the Muslim scholarship, would be your number one opponents against the concept that God, Allah, the all-wise God, would appear in the form of a man. Your number one opposition would be the broader Muslim world. So we want to look at what the Holy Quran says because the Holy Quran is the criteria that Muslims should go by, right? That's why it's the book of scripture for Muslims. So if we're going to deal with what Allah is, I think we should use the Quran as the criteria as opposed to these Muslim scholars. So we want to see what the Holy Quran says versus what the ulama or the Muslim scholars say. Let's take a look at it. Now, as I stated earlier, the concept of God being a spirit is not rooted in the Quran. Nowhere in the Quran does it say that God is a spirit. It says he has spirit. As all humans do. Huh? He has spirit referred to as Ruh. But it does not say that God is a spirit. So where does this, the Muslim scholars get this understanding from? Or lack of understanding? Don't you know this is what has represented the fall of the Muslim world? See, the Muslim world, at one point, because of the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran encourages and really demands that you nurse from God's universe. You research because the, Allah tells us in the Holy Quran that there are signs all in his creation, all in his nature. So because of the revelation of the Quran, the Muslim world became the number one proponents of scholarship, advancing the world in science, technology, medicine, they refer to it as the golden age of Islam. But what happened? It's like the Muslim world failed. It's like when it comes to science and stuff, the Muslim world is a joke now. They were once the people that enlightened the world with science and technology. Because that's what the Quran says. But what happened? One of the problems is that we put down the Quran and started listening to these damn scholars. Who don't know anything. Oh yeah. Listen to this. There's this concept in Islam. Really not in Islam. That's been attributed to Islam. Called taqlid. Taqlid is the concept. Of relying. On the Islamic scholarship. For interpretation. And for understanding. Of what Islam is. So at a certain point. The people started relying on the leaders, the scholarship, who didn't know anything. This is what led to the downfall of the Muslim world. Oh, man. So, I know the Islamic scholars are the biggest opponents of it about God being a man, but obviously they don't know too much. Let's look a little, let's look a little further. Now, the Holy Quran describes Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as being the unseen. And some people would say that, oh, see, this is why Allah could never be a man because Allah is al ghaib the unseen. Oh, so sorry. Okay. This word, unseen, comes from the Arabic word al ghaib which comes from the Arabic root, ghaba. This word is used in the Quran as unseen, but it really means not just unseen, but it means to be withdrawn from. To have your presence withdrawn from. Almost like to be absent or hidden. Huh? So, y'all see this towel, this hanky? Do you see it now? It's unseen. It doesn't mean it can't be seen, it's just unseen right now. All praise is due to Allah. So Allah says in the Holy Quran in 42 and 51, it is not vouchsafe that Allah reveal himself to a mortal except, except he does it either through revelation or by sending a prophet or unless he speaks from behind a veil. In other words, unless he keeps himself hidden where the people don't know who he is. 
So it's not saying that Allah can't be seen. It's saying that he chooses not to be seen. Huh? Al Habib. Let's go back to our criteria in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran reads to us, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and mention Mary in the book when she drew aside from her family to an eastern place. So she screened herself from them. Then we, this is Allah talking, then we sent to her our spirit, and it appeared to her as a well made man. In some Quranic translations, it said it appeared to her as a perfect man. <laughs> huh? Whoa, well, hold up, hold up. So you saying that Allah, his spirit, can be in the form of a well-made man? According to the Holy Quran, absolutely. Where did the scholars get this from? Oh, man. See, this is what I call spiritual dyslexia. See, if you know about dyslexia, it's a disorder in which it becomes difficult to understand or interpret something that you read because you get the numbers, the letters, and the symbols, and the words mixed up. Yeah. And it, calls, it produces an inability to understand whatever it is you're reading. So when you have the Holy Quran, Allah saying that he can send his spirit in the form of a human being, and then you turn around and say, no, no, Allah can never be a man. I'm saying you got some spiritual dyslexia. Oh, man. You got something confused going on over there. Right here in front of your face, but no, 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 no. And you see why the Islamic world has fallen? That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he wouldn't give two cents for that scholarship. Well, look, I don't know about them, but we in the nation of Islam, we believe that Allah appeared to us in the form of a well-made, perfect man. So, in Islam, we have this thing referred to as um, Tawheed. Tawheed deals with the oneness of God. This is a commonality in every major faith tradition. That God is one. Can I hear you all say Tawheed? Okay. This has to do with the oneness of God. We all believe God is one. And for some reason, the Muslim world, some of them, they would like to use this scripture from the Holy Quran, from Surah Al-Ikhlas, which is a very oft-repeated surah. It is repeated both when we read and in our prayers. But... They think that they can use this to prove that no, Allah cannot be a man. Let's take a look at it. This is in Arabic. It reads, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kul huwa lahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakun lahu kufu wa nahad. In English, it reads, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Say he, Allah, is one. Allah is he whom all depend. He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. Let's start with the first verse. Say he, Allah is one. ahad. He. Let me stop right there. He. Coming from the Arabic pronoun hua. He. He is a personal masculine pronoun. If your spook Allah is a spirit, how can a formless, shapeless spirit have a gender? If he is a spirit, shouldn't it say it, Allah is one? Then it says, Allah is he whom all depend. That's direct. How can a material universe depend on an immaterial God? Okay. But Allah is he, he whom we all depend. Number three. He begets not, nor is he begotten. This is the part they try to do. See, 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 see. He begets not, nor is he begotten. See, I knew you people are committing shirk. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Well, what makes God God? Is it the, the person that he's in the person of? Or is it his wisdom? 
See, the Holy Quran refers to Allah as the best knower. Meaning that he's God because of what he knows. He's God because of what he has. See, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, these are nouns, but they are referred to as abstract nouns. Y'all remember reading about abstract and concrete nouns? See, a noun is a person, place, thing, but it can also be a, an idea or a concept. See, wisdom is a noun. Can you touch wisdom? But you can touch what the wisdom is in, right? You would not know wisdom unless it was manifested through something, right? So tell me this. If Allah is the best knower, he has the knowledge, the wisdom, the power. You can't touch the power, but you can touch the person that it's in. So you don't beget wisdom. You don't give birth to wisdom. You give birth to the vessel that holds the wisdom. Huh? But look at it. See, this is consistent with science. I'm, I have some scientists in here, Dr. Fuxing, always a pleasure to have you. In science, you may have heard of the law of conservation of energy. Okay, well, let me, you'll know it once I say it like this. This is the one that says that energy is neither created nor destroyed. He begets not nor is it begotten. It, it simply changes forms. Huh? So, energy is not begotten. It's neither created nor destroyed, but it changes person. Oh, man. See, that wisdom, that power of God cannot be begotten. It cannot be given birth to. It can it neither begets nor is it begotten. Oh, man, it changes form, but it changes person. This is why mathematics, you have one times one times one is what? Times one. Times one? one. So it continues to be one. Yeah. Islam is mathematics, and mathematics is Islam. <laughs> My God. And there is none like him. He's a person, but ain't nobody like this person. Huh? So when you look at it, this particular surah, surah, surah al-Ikhlas, it literally proves that Elijah's God must be God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's continue with Tawheed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is from Surah the Rahman, the 55th Surah of the Holy Quran, the 27th verse. It says, And there endures forever the person of thy Lord. Wayabka wajhu rabika thu al-jalali wal ikhrani. And there endures forever the person of thy Lord. This word for person in this particular part in Arabic comes from the word wajh. W-A-J-H. Can I hear you all say wajh? Wajh. <laughs> wajh is used several times in the Holy Quran in reference to Allah. And wajh has to do with a person or a face or a countenance. But it all has to do with some physical representation. So the Holy Quran tells us that all things will pass away, but they will always endure the person of thy Lord. You see, this is why God has always come in person. The person might change over time, but it's the same wisdom, the same God, the same spirit. This is why when you read your Bible, you find so many different names of God at different times. So when he appeared to Abraham in Genesis, he was known as El Shaddai. He was in the person of El Shaddai. By the time Moses came along, he was in the person of Yahuwah or Jehovah. Huh? By the time Isaiah and Ezekiel came along, he was Adonai. By the time Job came along, he was Goel. Other prophets, he was known as El Elyon. Different persons, different times. Because when you look at the sphere of the Bible, it encompasses, what, 4,000 years? Something like that? Well, the God appeared in the different persons throughout time. That's why you got different names. And this is why you read in the Bible and the Quran, it says the name of God. Mm. The name of God. You see, Allah has a name, Allah. That's his, really like a title. So it's the, what's the name of Allah? Depending on when you were living. And, and what person he was in. Huh? Are y'all with me?